Hadagaya was formed in 2013 by a couple motivated to work for positive change in the world. We are passionate about science and technology and inspired by the concepts of a resource-based economy, RBE. The basis of this socio-economic system is a broader understanding of human behaviour. Although the current system has allowed development in many fields and the monetary system has a certain built-in incentive structure, it is slow to adapt to changes in the environment. We promote a more adaptive system that does not stick firmly to outdated belief systems, but rather seeks to improve itself through the accumulation of new knowledge. Our long-term vision is to provide resources and services without the use of money with an increased focus towards the well-being and collaboration of the human species. However, societal change doesn't happen overnight and we currently need to operate within the existing society. Hence, we are exploring a transition period. In 2014, land was bought in rural Peru to develop a pilot community to evaluate the concepts and technologies behind a new socio-economic system, which will act as a model for future projects. We have five and a half hectares of land in the region of Chanchamayo in the jungle of Peru and we are developing the necessary infrastructure for providing the basic needs of 40 people. Over the last few years, we've built a communal house and workshop, installed clean water and grey water systems, green energy systems, a vortex hydroelectric power plant on our river and some solar photovoltaic, and even internet access in this remote area. This is the river that the Karagai community gets its energy from. The system has a head of 1.1 meters and an average flow rate of 1,000 liters per second. This water gets diverted into a channel and ends up in our turbine, as seen here. Following is some footage when the vortex is running. We spent the last few years constructing the plant and experimenting with different tank geometries and turbine designs. Moving rocks from around the river to build a dike is a process that took us a long time because of the rainy season that occurs in Peru. All the excavation was dug out by hand since the area is not accessible by larger machines. This meant a lot of man hours had to be put into digging and moving rocks but having a reliable source of green energy is an essential part of the Karagaya project. Building this hydroelectric plant has been an interesting challenge for us and we have learned a lot during this process and we hope that we will be able to help other communities build their green energy source. As of May 2017 we are using a temporary system for transmission using rubber belts. This gives us enough energy to use appliances like computers and internet but as we are planning to build a laundry outreach center, we will need more power. Therefore, we are designing a planetary magnetic gearbox, which will provide us with overload protection, contactless and lubricant-free transmission to prevent situations like a broken gearbox, as seen here. One reason we chose to implement the model community in a developing country was to have the opportunity to have an immediate positive impact on a vulnerable population. The level of poverty in Peru has dropped over the past decade. Between 2004 and 2014 in our area of Junín, poverty has dropped from 56.2% to 18.8%. However, there are still many in our rural area who struggle to provide their basic needs and exposure to technology is limited. An upcoming project is the construction of an outreach and educational centre to collaborate with the local community. We will use power and water from the river to provide a free laundry to reduce the burden on the women, providing them with more free time for their family, education or simply relaxation. 
We will offer social and educational resources within the centre for the women and their children within a setting landscape to highlight sustainable agriculture and permaculture practices. We have selected strategic areas of focus for the initial stages of the project in order to achieve maximum human development, for example, physical and mental health, education and social cohesiveness, as well as improving the local ecosystem. We are implementing a holistic system where every work group is connected to others and the community members have the opportunity to gain as many skills as possible across a broad range of areas. We have evaluated various established state-of-the-art and emergent appropriate technologies and have selected a short list of solutions that we believe are the most viable for this project. In this evaluation we have considered the location of the pilot project, the initial investment budget, available open source technologies and the integration of the technology into more advanced systems in the future. A holistic view of health is being considered with respect to agriculture, education, sanitation, nutrition, medicine and social interactions. Increasing the awareness of the community about these issues is of high importance to optimise physical, emotional and mental health. Holistic medicine that focuses on prevention of disease and a more broad understanding of the effects of the environment in which a person lives and interacts will be prioritised. In addition, the traditional knowledge of natural medicines of Peru will be evaluated by a collaboration with the locals. The food crops for the Kadagai community have been selected in order to efficiently provide maximum nutrition for the community. Advanced agricultural techniques such as aquaponics will be used to grow a wide range of crops in less area than traditional farming. This diagram shows the holistic life cycle of the aquaponic system. The plants are not grown in soil, but rather indoors in a controlled environment. Here the plants are combined with a fish farm, where the nutrient-rich water from the fish tank feeds the plants, in turn cleaning the water which is returned to the fish. To maximise the recovery of nutrients, all vegetable and fish waste will be returned to the system in the form of compost for feeding worms and soldier flies, which are then used to feed the fish. The design of the pilot village incorporates communal living, the efficient use of shared resources and integrated technology. The urbanisation will take a circular form to optimise the infrastructure and centralise communal activities and promote collaboration. We plan to use mostly natural building materials, preferably those grown on site or from the local area. In this project we aim to develop advanced technologies which require the use of technical materials. We plan to trial the Grow Your Own House concept, where the majority of the required building materials will be cultivated on the property. We plan to fabricate biocomposite materials consisting of a natural fibre, such as bamboo or hemp, and a biopolymer, polylactic acid sourced from corn or potatoes, coupled with a foam made from mycelium, the root of mushrooms, to form fibreglass style sandwich panels for modular housing. Most of our clean water is rainwater collected from the roofs of the buildings. In addition, we can pump water from our river. We have several stages of filtration and cleaning to ensure that our drinking water is as clean as possible. A first flush system and mesh filters are installed before the water tanks to discard the dirty water that comes off the roof in the first rain. The main storage tank is fitted with another finer filter and finally the drinking water is treated with UV irradiation which kills bacteria and viruses and ensures highly clean water. The drinking quality water is used for cooking, drinking and personal hygiene, while for washing clothes, cleaning and agriculture, the lower grade river water can be used. Most of our neighbours have access to clean water, but often require large quantities for crop irrigation and washing coffee beans during the harvest season. Hence, we hope to be able to use the power and water we pump from the river for helping them in the future. There are various forms of waste that need to be managed at Kadagaya. These can be divided into two broad categories. Organic waste, for example paper, agricultural and human waste, and inorganic waste, for example plastics, metals and glass. All organic waste will be used to make compost for the permaculture gardens or feed animals. We limit the amount of inorganic waste as much as possible by our choices as consumers. 
During the installation of infrastructure, we produce construction waste, most of which we try to reuse or recycle as a feed source for technical materials. The wastewater produced from washing clothes and dishes is called grey water and is a nutrient-rich water that can be recycled in the garden. Our grey water is currently passed through a sedimentation system and then used to irrigate the food forest. The larger amounts of wastewater produced in the future, for example from the laundry centre, processing and retention ponds will be required. Here, the dirty water is cleaned by natural biochemical processes. These deep ponds will have layers of rock, gravel and sand to slowly filter the water and specially selected plants will remove nutrients and purify the water. These ponds will be landscaped to look like a natural part of the environment. The resulting water is clean enough for agricultural irrigation and will be slowly released down the hill to the technical crops and eventually return to the river. Any nutrient rich water in excess of our needs could be diverted to the crops of our neighbours. Toilet waste will be transferred to a biodigester to produce methane gas for cooking. The sterile solid residue can be used to fertilise the fruit trees and technical crops.